Hi, hi, hi. It's Mrs. Stitches or Sheila. Um, I'm here for floss tube number 26. Um, welcome everybody. Welcome to my new subscribers and welcome to all my old friends. Um, I didn't come back, as you may have noticed, I didn't come back after a week. Uh, it's, that's just too much for me. I, I, I uh, was busy and it just got away from me. So I'm going to stick with two weeks. Two weeks is good. So I got tons to show you. I have um, two finishes, I believe. One FFO um, and a whole bunch of whips. And I have a Save the Stitches, which I'm going to start off with sharing right away. Um, <clears throat> I also will spin the wheel. Uh, and I might answer a question, um, I think. We'll see how long this gets. So first, save the stitches. Uh, the save the stitches, I guess it really wasn't a save the stitches per se. It was a stitchy kindness save the stitches. Um, we, my last week was busy. Uh, I had some friends come out from BC to visit. And so I spent a couple of days cleaning the house and, um, then they, they arrived and they happened to arrive right when my husband got a call to deliver another bird to um, a drop off for Hope for Wildlife. It was a saw wet owl. I'll show a picture of it here in a little video here. Open it so you can see. Hello, baby boy. Oh, no, that's fine. That's well, it's fine. not too cute. bright. It's not like sunny Look sunny. at you. Cool. And the person who organizes all this, all the bird rescues or the birds getting back to somebody who could look after them. Um, this one actually was hit by a car and was just stunned and got taken to, to be examined, was fine, and then was released. So the picture and the video was the day of its release. We didn't actually go to the release because it has to be released where it was found and that was uh, probably about an hour away or so. So we just went to the person's house to see, but she very kindly gave me this as a thank you. And I think it is gorgeous. We're gonna, um, I'm gonna hang it up in our bird room, but it is just beautiful. I really nice, neat stitching. Uh, this fabric is really quite thick and I mean her back <laughs> why are some people's back so much better than mine that's her back amazing amazing so that's the save the stitches I found the actual um, pattern I believe this is an artist um, whose works turned into cross stitch and puzzles um, the name is Marjolin Bro Broston, I think, Broston. And so I found it, um, I found a, a website and found um, this pattern. Well, I think I found this on Etsy, but um, I mean, obviously I could get the pattern and stitched again myself, but I, it's gorgeous. I thought, thought that was a really lovely save the stitches and stitchy kindness. So I will now hang that up in our bird room. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to, um, speaking of artists, last week's um, spin got me a, a piece called um, Salty Day at the Rocks, I believe. Salty Day at the Rocks. And so I stitched on it the, on my free time and I started working on this area down here. Uh, I'm going to show you a picture of what it'll look like when it's finished here. And it's coming along really nicely. I'm, I'm going to work my way down because there's waves and crashing waves down there. So I'm just kind of working my way down. But isn't that amazing? The, the, the hard part about this is, as you can tell, the colors are browns and grays. So there's not a lot of colorfulness in it. And the other thing is it's going to take a while for it to come to life and see the, the actual vision. And I think that's what happens sometimes with artists' work is it's taken from a painting and it just takes a little time to to develop or to um, show what it is. 
the the person's um that does this is called paint with stitches calm um she's on etsy and she has tons of beautiful designs i'll just try maybe click on a few a lot are um oops it just went away a lot of them are like wildlife there's like that one there she's just coming out with one that's a zebra but that's amazing um could have actually just shown you from right here the uh let's see and she it's really well designed her her work um she gives you uh, all the colors and symbols are a little different but it works with pattern keeper which is great and it's very much like a heaven and earth designs um just kind of a slow progress as to to get it all done this one i'm working on and it's a full coverage but not a full full coverage because it actually the sky is left blank so that's kind of neat so different <laughs> okay after that i did spin my wheel again so i'm going to show my um spin right here here is my next uh spin for what i will stitch for one weekend in the next two weeks don't know which weekend probably it'll be two weeks from now but anyways here we go let's see what i'm gonna get Ooh. birthday cake okay i can do that it's birthday cake time awesome bye and like so as you saw i got birthday cake this is really fun doing the spinning the wheel because it's getting me a chance to work on projects i haven't worked in a while but this is birthday cake it's a carol manny designs um all of this white you're seeing is actually stitched that is um oh i can't remember i think it's a crew uh i mean it looks a lot like the white of the fabric but it's been stitched so that's a birthday cake starting off so i will work on that not this weekend but next weekend because this weekend coming up is um 24 hours of cross stitch so i have plans for that so let's show a few of our finishes let's show the ffo first sitting right here you may have been seeing in the background is an ffo this is liz matthews uh, i think it's called halloween quakers pump quakers but i can't remember i should have looked that up but i'll put it in the notes below but all hallows eve made it into pillow because that's what i do and i had changed this out um she had three birds in here totally and i put one bird in our green cheek conyers colors so that's chicken hawk there you will see chicken hawk coming up but uh, so that's my ffo uh just a a plain fabric on the back i had bought these halloween fabrics but it was too small it wasn't long enough so i just used one from my stash which was probably much more economical i think this was a remnant that i got and it's a lot of fabric for only dollar 75 that was a great deal okay uh, another little finish i got oh i'm gonna do that one a little later i'll do do my grand finish so you may have guessed big big finish Ta -da! Da, 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 da. i'll show you a video of me doing the final stitches right here i don't know he's just gonna hold it okay okay <laughs> this is chicken hawk here hi chicken hawk hello chicken hawk yeah hello hello this yes we're gonna do our we're now gonna focus on my stitching ouch ouch so this is i only got three stitches to go i'm doing the grass here by the pumpkin my final little stitch i now have two stitches to go yes chicken hawk Oh, no, I actually have three stitches to go right now because it goes up again over there. Yes, I know. I was wrong, Chicken Hawk. Yeah. Here we go. One more after this. This tiny little corner here. 
And this is the end of Halloween. It's been a pleasure stitching this, and I'm actually going to kind of miss it. I did it in one year, and someday I will do another one, but not right away. I'll take my time. And there we go, and I'm just going to snap it out of the cue snap. I'll take the needle minder off with my broken needle and my good needle and put them right there. Now I have to look and make sure there's nethers. Oops. <laughs> There it is. I still obviously got to iron it still, but that's Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. A year of stitching. And I'll talk more about it in a floss too, but boy oh boy, I do love it. It was a wonderful, wonderful stitch. Very pleased with it. And you've all been around long for the ride. That's awesome. Halloween at Hawkrun Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. 12 blocks, and I did it in 12 months, a block a month. <laughs> Bye. And you saw a chicken hawk on my shoulder helping me out. Sometimes he sits and stitches with me. So that is Halloween at Hawkrun Hollow by Carriage House Sampling. Don't need to show you the cover photo because everything is here. There, we'll just go through the blocks one by one. Oops, that's not the first one. This is the first block. That's the second block. Block three. Block four. Block five. Six and seven are together. Block eight. Block nine. Ten, one of my favorites. 11 I can't see and 12 which was the hardest because it was full coverage and that was a lot of stitching that was over there 90 I think 91 by 91 or 90 by 9 I think they're 91 by 91 so over 8,000 something stitches so a lot of stitches so that is done I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet um I was thinking I don't have much of a border so I was thinking of doing um, a rod at the top. Might add fabric or add tabs and do a rod and a rod at the bottom and do it like a hanging type thing. But for now, I just enjoy it. Okay. Next, 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 next. I told you that my husband um, did me my own October Halloween um advent calendar so every day I get a piece of the a whole pattern um, it's a mystery to me so I can't show you what it'll look like but I'm going to show you right now just a montage of photos that I've taken at the end of each stitch day so that'll be for about two weeks um, I may have missed a photo or two I don't think I got today's photos but here will be a little short uh, montage of the 10 or so photos So, so here is the piece I'm working on. So I'm missing some colors still. I'm missing about five colors, I believe. Um, some he couldn't get, so I'll have to substitute for my stash. And um, I think only one is still to come. 
but it's kind of cool. So got a ghost up there, another a ghoul there. Cauldron I thought was an animal. I couldn't actually get it was cauldron until I stitched it. The owl, a spider that's really cool, cat, and another ghost. And that's going to be a broom and then the, um, the fence line. It is a fun little stitch. It's kind of weird doing it when you actually don't know what things are and how they're going to come up. So um, I have some filling in because colors came a little later. So this blue came just really recently. It hasn't been filled in in the spots and I think some other colors. So I have them all as almost each square each time. So I have a whole bunch of these in Pattern Keeper. So I have to go through the very first one and try and fill them. Once I've done all the colors in that square and the squares are um, uh, 600 stitches total, well, 600 squares, uh, it's a, a 30 by 20. Um, so once I finish one completely, which I think I finished one over here, I think this one's completely done, um, then I'll delete them. But uh, for 24 hours cross stitch, I plan on getting caught up a bit. Going back and doing some of the missing colors, I'll have, uh, he's gonna probably give me two squares that day. And so that, that will be working on this. And the other thing I will work on on that day is, <clears throat> oh, wait, I put her, is my Dark Queen. Way down at the bottom. Probably just lost a needle. Oh, I probably did. No, it's there. Good. Um, so this is Dark Queen of the Earth. I still have Dark Queen of the Sea to finish too, which I probably should have showed you because I did a bunch of stitching on it. But anyway. Well, I'll work on both of these on 24 hours cross stitch when, after I finish my, I call it 4-H club, um, my Halloween mystery stitch, but um, I'm going to be filling in a bunch of her dress. So that's Dark Queen of the Earth, another mystery, 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 mystery. <laughs> Let's get so confusing all the mysteries. <laughs> okay, let's work in order now. So... Last time I told you I started to do um, a daily 30 and so this is my daily 30 of Twisted Band Sampler. So I've done quite a bit. It's going really well. It's going to take me about two weeks because um, I get about 100 stitches done and it's only 30 minutes, 100 stitches done and there's 1400 stitches in the, the diagonal I'm doing right now. But so I'm just doing uh, the cross stitch section down there. Just switched to color. Looks like kind of like little flowers. But I finished the specialty row and then finished the one of one color. So there we go. So can't wait to get to the next colors, but I got to wait. So this, I believe when I get down here is the corner and then I'll, they'll be shortening up. So that's great, <laughs> but really, really liking it. So that's Twist and Bad and Sampler by I believe Northern Expressions. She's a Canadian Etsy shop. My other daily project I work on is Felix. This is a pick to pat pattern that I made um, and I'm doing it for my husband. And so I've been mostly filling in black and so you might be able to see I got black done over there. So that's that's coming along very nicely. I'm really enjoying that. I'll get back to the confetti um, once in November. I'll just, for the rest of this month, I'm just going to work on the black because I can get the 100, I do 100 stitches, 110 stitches, 100 and at least 10, 100 full cross stitches a day. It's usually over that. I've been doing 110 lately, but whatever. And um, it's easy when it's all black because no color changes and I can just go at it. So still got to do today's. I have to get to this tonight. This is um, my temperature tree. So I am semi caught up. Um, this is the month of October here. So I still obviously have to do the last two weeks, but there we go. It'll be interesting to see the next ones because I think it's going to be into the cooler, the greens or the, the, the beiges. But it's 
nice to see it alive and I got some ideas for next year so kind of still working on that in my mind I'm gonna have to start really planning that out in December but here we go uh, every 10th and 10th for sure sometimes the 20th and sometimes the 30th I am working on Pirate's Poltergeist, which is a cell with Julie and um, I can't remember the other person's name. You know, I think there might be three or four of us doing it. You're all welcome to join us. Uh, it's uh, Poltergeist Pirate's Cell. So there's two S's at the end with the end of the pirates and the cell. I'll put the, the link below. Uh, Glendon Place, Poltergeist Pirates, <laughs> Poltergeist Pirates cell. So I wanted to work my way up to this corner here, the moon. I like to, about, I'm a top left corner starter, so I'm kind of trying to get my way over there, and then I don't know where I'll go from there. The other, one of the other persons is working on the dragon, which is really cool. Um, I'm not sure where I'll go from there, but right now get my way to the moon. So that's, I got the, the go, finished off the ghost the other day and the w moon is blowing the wind, which is kind of different, but anyways, <laughs> and there it is. So that's my Pirate's Poltergeist. I love this stitch. So I actually look forward to the next time I'm stitching. This is a beautiful fabric. Um, I think it's, oh. I got these as a D stash or not D stash. It was consignment at a um, stitching store, and oh, I can't remember the name of the fabric. Um, mm, can't remember. I'll tell you next time. But it is a beautiful. It's probably even weave, and it's really, really lovely. So I think it's a twenty-eight count. But that's uh, my poltergeist pirates. So couple more days oh I didn't tell you the day today today is I'm pretty sure it's September 17th 2022 it is a Monday so I think I get to stitch on this on Thursday yeah I think Thursday so so looking forward to that uh, so many things um, another thing I, I've I've joined a couple of what do you call them like Facebook challenge things um, one of them is uh, do I want to talk about this first no I'm gonna switch this around okay one of them is um, uh, stitching in the wild and they have challenges where you can collect it's just for fun you collect different things and so one of them was um they called it uh freaking backstage a vu and what they had was they explained there were three types of bats and so one of the bats is a really really small bat i think it's called a kitty hog nose bat and you were to stitch either 250 stitches or two and a half hours i've kind of gotten away from counting and so i did two and a half hours which really works well for me because then in the evening i just Put on the timer and I work for two and a half hours so the first one was stitch on your smallest project well that turned out to be my Mill Hill kit uh, bee gnome and it ended up being a finish <laughs> this is my first ever Mill Hill kit so there he is here's my little guy oh, we'll focus in on him doesn't look like it's gonna focus in on him but there's my little guy so he's cute and I use some cheap uh, kids plastic beads to make the thing. I'm going to have him as a Christmas ornament. It's your traditional uh, bee gnome Christmas ornament. You know, it's got Christmas colors. So, and I put just a, uh, it's like a, it's kind of a strange felt. It's, it's kind of, I don't know what it's called, but on the back. And that's my little bee gnome. <laughs> he was really fun. I was really quite impressed with the quality of Mill Hill kits. Um, it was a great stitching thing for in the car because it's so stiff and you don't have to really worry about the holes are so big and I, I was able to stitch on some roads I'd never been able to stitch on before. So uh, he was really, really fun to finish up. Um, 
yeah, uh, and I got really good at doing beading. So he doesn't have tons of beans, but he does have some. Um, and there were lots of leftovers. Like I, with the quality, they give you lots of extra. There was there was probably almost enough floss to do two of them and beads too. So I was really impressed with the quantity they gave you. So that's my Beano. The next project to work on was um, your biggest. And that was kind of tricky. Um, but I figured I, I'll just pick a big one. So I picked a big one. It's my heaven and earth designs. This is Tempest Fujit. Been a while since I worked on it. And let's see if I can hold this. Well, I'll just hold it like that. And so I worked two and a half hours on it and I got my page finish over here done. So now I'm moved move back over to here. I think I got over 400 stitches done in the two and a half hours. It went really, really well. So this is Tempest Fidget Heaven Earth Designs by James C. Christensen. And I'll just show you a little bit closer. That's uh, pretty amazing. I love this and I, I'm so happy to get back to it. So that was really, really good. I will get back to it again, but they have another stitch thing coming up in next month, I think, starting October 29th. One more bat to collect, and it is to stitch on the project that takes the most concentration. I'm going to work on, I won't show you now because I haven't put any stitches in it yet, but I'm going to work on my um, Chatelaine uh, Medieval Her Herb Garden. So you will see that next week uh, or next time, two weeks from now. Uh, but anyways, that's what I plan on working on. So there you go. That's, that's that challenge. Now, because the Oh, no. So I have another challenge that I don't know if you've heard about Whip Be Gone. Um, Michelle Bendy talked about it and uh, it's a, it's actually a quilting group, but there's there's cross stitching too. And essentially it's focusing on last year. They did October, November, December on finishing as many whips as you can. So I wrote up potential finishes. So the Bee Gnome was a finish. Um, Halloween at Hawker and Hollow was a finish. And... There's one other, there's a few others, um, but another one I'm working on, I thought I'd show you progress because I've actually done quite a bit on this, is this is my uh, Nightmare Before Christmas cell from last year, and I changed it into um, a memorial for a cat that passed away around um, Thanksgiving, which would have been just a little over a year ago now. And so what I decided was I made the ship and the, her birth year and the year she died and then Captain Frosty was her name long may your big jib draw these didn't show up very well so I decided to do the ship and taking from the design of uh, Poltergeist Pirates I decided this is what I was going to do for a ship to make it look like wooden boards so I've done this corner and, and I'm done the uh, I'm working on the other one going to be a lot of stitching so I still have lots to go but I will finish this before the end of this year you heard it here you heard it here I have a few ideas of something more I want to add to it but let's get the boat done first okay well that's my pile is that my pile that's my pile that's everything huh well that wasn't as long as I thought it was going to be. I rushed through it because I thought that was a lot of stitching. So, uh, I did this without notes. It's a lot harder without notes. So I'm going to try and get notes next time. It'll just be a bit better. Um, question, a question. I came up with a question about what was your most, I can't remember the words they used, but it was to do with nightmares. Um, and oh, by the way, it was so wonderful. Um, people shared with me on in comments of the last video their regrets too, and it was really it made me feel very connected to you guys. And I loved hearing your story. So, whenever I put this question out here, I love if you want to share that'd be great too. So, this was your most I'm gonna say your most memorable uh nightmare, and um. I had one that um, when I was in my 
I want to say early 20s, I actually started um, Dream Diary. And I think this, and it's interesting, when you actually do a Dream Diary, uh, I had got a book out and I read it. And what they said to do to remember your dreams was you actually set your clock a little bit earlier, I think 15 minutes ahead or 30 minutes, 15 minutes, I think what it said, so that you actually wake up before your um, regular time. You're actually kind of really close still to the REM sleep and you'll have better recall at that moment. And the other thing you do is you either write it down or you tell your, I would tell myself the as if it was a story. So I did that for years. Um, from that one, there was one dream that was quite uh, memorable. It's also the first one I recorded, so it could be that. But before that, I remembered a dream that I had. I don't know when it was that I had it, but I, I, for a while there, I had lots of dreams of nuclear explosions and I had this dream. I, I can kind of just remember it where I was in a room and there was a window and I was looking out and all of a sudden I just saw this nuclear explosion with the mushroom cloud coming up. I grew up in the seventies <laughs> and mushroom cloud. And then I could just, I knew that there was this big wave of pressure or wind coming and I stood in the window and all of a sudden all the glass just shattered and just sprayed all over me. I don't remember being cut, but I just remember it spraying all over. And the thing was I was getting radiation poisoning. And I knew at that instant that for some reason I only had an hour to live, but I was in this cabin. Nobody's around. There's nothing to do. That was it. I just knew the clock had started at that point. It was a very, and that's, that's the vision I remember of that dream. And now I'm sure it was just due to, um, like I said, at the time, the cold war growing up in the, um, seventies and, and the whole, there was a lot of beliefs on the, I think the whole nuclear war was a big thing in my life and a scary thing. And, um, so that's probably where it came from. I don't know. Um, I also have a lot of dreams and I, I don't, these must mean something that I'm worried about something coming up. So that, it's weird when you analyze your dreams too, because you're kind of looking for the root meaning to it. Um, there was other ones where I had where, um, I'm on a boat and suddenly we're in a war where there's cannonballs being shot at us and I'll see a cannonball land right on the deck and you kind of see it go boom, 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 boom. And then, you know, you're sinking and it's sort of all of these are kind of like, um, pending doom or worried about something in the future or kind of anxious of things to come, or maybe feel like I'm running out of time to do all the things I want to do, or who knows, who knows? So those are just, a, um, two of the dreams that I sh would share. I could, sh I am sharing. <laughs> um, dreams are funny because a lot won't translate um, into real world or real, real time. I um, was listening to or watching um, Alaire and she actually mentioned how she used to have dreams of flying and falling. And she thought that um, you don't have those dreams as an adult. Uh, and she loved flying dreams. I still have falling dreams. I have falling dreams a lot. I think I only get them when I'm super tired or something. And it, I always believed it was almost like my subconscious didn't want to let me go to sleep. So I'd be like sort of almost nodding off and then I would fall and it would jerk myself awake. And I, yeah, I get those probably maybe once a year, twice a year. Um, I, I don't like them at all. I don't like that feeling of falling. And, and it, that's one of my fears in life is falling. And I, I'm working at getting better. Um, I actually had a bit of success this week. I went on some trails and I wasn't afraid of falling. Um, my husband and I were somewhere and, um, we went down a rocky trail and and i know he was kind of concerned for me thinking i'd be afraid to go normally i don't like going down rocky trails but i just went and i didn't even think about it and i was really pretty proud of myself afterwards that 
the fear wasn't there. It's interesting, this race walking is actually making me really, really stronger, more strong, stronger than it running did. Um, I really have to flex my quads quite a bit to do the race walking, which the quads always actually stabilize the knees. So it's, um, it's just, it's, it's really, really good. So, um, and today I'm right now just training with a 1K race walk, which doesn't sound like much and it isn't much, but today I got under eight minutes for my 1K race walk. I was thrilled. So my husband said that was my goal before I could move it up. So next I'm going to do a one mile or 1.6K race walk. So that until I get that under eight minutes and then I'll keep building up the, the length based on trying to be under eight minutes per K, not eight minutes for the mile, eight minutes per K. So those are um, a couple of things. Uh, plans coming up. Got 24 hours cross stitch. I will be working on my 4-H club, my Halloween mystery thing. And um, on the Dark Queen of the Earth, get caught up in it. And then the Dark Queen of the Sea, if I have any more time. I'm planning on doing a consecutive 24 hours. That's what I did on the very first 24 hours cross stitch. You can do either um, a consecutive one where you do 24 hours straight, all consecutive, or you can do, it starts on like Friday at first thing in the morning, like whatever that is, like just after midnight till Sunday midnight. So it's 72 hours. And so the other thing some people do is just try to get the 24 hours in, in that time, in that 72 hour time frame. you can do whatever you want to do. People do, it's just a, a, a way to spend the weekend, having a weekend donated or focused on stitching. Um, one thing I like to do before the 24 hours cross stitch, cause it feels a little selfish, just stitching and not doing any cleaning or anything. Pretty much I just stitch, eat and whatever. Um, so I will probably spend a little time the day before, probably not much stitching the day before. I might just do uh, Felix and um, my daily 30 and then um, to spend a little time cleaning up so that I don't feel so guilty and kind of can just focus on stitching. So um, I'm like plan, like I said, I'm planning on maybe if my very first one I started in the middle of the night, like Friday morning, like right after midnight and went to the Friday midnight, got it right done right away, which I probably will do again. And then just see how many more hours I can get after that. Um, on, yeah, that's probably what I'm planning to do. So, uh, and those are the two projects I'll work on in the 24 hours. It's, um, yeah. What else? Uh, like I said, I'm going to finish off my last bat, uh, with, um, medieval herb garden. And then, um, the next one is, uh, I think called deep sea trenches and they have, oh, I think around 10 different things. So they're all different prompts that you would just do a hundred stitches of. And, um, like one was with a heat source. So it could be a sun, a flame or whatever. Uh, one is with a nose, one is with an ear or mouth, an ear. So I might go back to Tempest Fugit on that. So I have uh, one is a stitch that you th that turned out to be easier to work on than you thought it would be. That one's going to be a bit tricky. Um, so that that uh, is still to come. Um, I think I'll be, let's see, today's 17th. Ooh, it's supposed to be Halloween that I'm talking to you next. Oh, I probably can do that. I think so. Halloween doesn't start till real about four o'clock here. So I usually do these around noon hour. So that, that will work. I'll do that. Um, and the only other thing is I'm, I still have that NBC. I'm working on finishing things and I'm going to be working on finishing one more thing, but I will show, I'll leave that as a surprise. We'll see. You'll see them when I get done. I think that's probably the sort of fun way to do it. So I think that's it for me and I got lots of uh, slicing of different videos to put in, but you'll have already seen that. So kind of silly of me to say it now, <laughs> but I uh, will see you all in two weeks time and take care, everybody. Have a fun, stitchy couple of weeks. Bye. Uh, ah, what a view. We've never been to this beach before. Oh,
Oh, you have to go along that way. Well, they don't look like they're really racing yet. Oh, maybe that's why, yeah. That doesn't look like they're racing. No, no, no. Maybe that was the pre-warm. Ah, maybe, maybe. Get ready. I'm sure they got instructions. Oh, yeah, maybe the buoys there I wonder how many they had. Oh, that might be the Sec oh, I see the pink thing might be a start line. Oh, are they going now? Yeah. Go, 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 go. Oh, there's the drone. Ah, I like the girl being off by herself, none of the with the boys. Oh. Not really aerodynamic. Woo! We were going to stand over there, and my husband said, "Well, we won't see anything." Actually, it turns out that would have been a good spot. <laughs> oh, that poor girl! Come on! <sighs> oh, I bet you the deeper is probably harder to paddle. 